short um, poems for tonight, but before I get into them, I just would like to say a word about my pants. <laughs> As you might have seen, um, neons are back. Um, makes me feel a little old that I wore them and remember them very well from the 80s, but they're back. And I got these vintage, actually, over the weekend, so I think these really might actually be from the 80s, but anyway. <laughs> I have brought them back, and here they are. And I picked them specifically, you know, it's Pink Speaks and etc. but seriously, they're leggings, they're tight, and I'm wearing these pants to say that breast cancer, breast cancer treatments, the side effects of breast cancer treatments, the bills for breast cancer and any cancer, the losses from cancer, God help us, and anything else related to this whole just unacceptable situation can kiss my hot pink ass. Yeah. <laughs> and all of our hot asses as well. <laughs> this is the one poem that I managed to finish during chemo. It didn't feel like a great time for poetry for me. I'm hoping to tap back into it from this perspective and write more about it, but at the time, not so much poetry, but I did get this. I saw the reflection of myself in a um, bus you know, the bus stop has plate glass, you see yourself. I saw myself in that and I thought, oh God, I'm like, who is that? Really? Like, steroid face and no hair and whoa, no eyelashes. So this is called Look. I don't look like myself. It's true, and I'm stranger than fiction. Now that I don't look like myself, I look like don't. And this is nothing that I ever could see for myself. You can see for yourself if you look. I don't look like myself. Don't look a gift self in the eye of the storm, in the eye of myself. I'm not looking myself in the eye, but look. In my mind's eye, I can see myself under my looks. I can see myself out. If I can see myself in my eye, I can remember that I like myself, love myself, look, I love myself, and if you doubt that, don't. Look, I remain myself, and to me, it looks like that will see me through. This is um, a work in progress, like life, even till today. <laughs> um, and some of you will laugh because you know her personally. This is called Amy. <laughs> this is um, a prose poem in progress about my oncologist, Amy. <laughs> her name is Amy Tiersten. I call her Amy, and this is why. <laughs> I picked her for her name. Well, actually, that and the fact that she's female. I couldn't imagine talking to a guy about my breasts and ovaries and vagina and all the side effects that might befall them in a medical relationship that would last for years. But beyond that, it was her first and middle name, Amy Diane, that made me choose. My cousin Amy is one of my very best friends in life. And Diane is so close to my beloved mother's name. May she rest in peace. This doctor named Amy Diane, as stated on the diplomas hanging all around, had to be the one to choose. In this fairly urgent situation, where I feared that any wrong move could be my last, I looked into her freckled face and I chose with my heart. Can I call you Amy? I asked her. And when she said yes, we were on. <laughs> With doctor and patient, I felt totally screwed. But Amy and Pam, Amy and Pam, we were going to have a chance. Thank you. That is so awesome. I love that. 
See, I think of my doctor like Marsha Brady. They thought of that Mr. Do- Mrs. Mrs. Marsha Dentist. That's how I see myself with all my dogs. I'm like, oh, Mrs. Jenny Oncologist. 